Okay. Hey everyone, we're here to talk about capacity. Capacity is the amount of energy that is demanded by a device at any instant, the maximum amount. And some, some devices have multiple stages, like you'll see a, a light that could have, have different settings. Like this, the laptop that I'm using right now has a capacity of 20 uh, watts. It's not on 24 seven, so that's not, it's very different. It's very important to understand the capacity has nothing to do with actual usage. Because you could have a device that you use one time for one minute, that entire year, and, you're, and it could, you could be demanding a ton of energy, you could be demanding a megawatt on your magic device, but you only used it for, for one minute. And so capacity is, it has 100% to do with potential. And another step back is it, capacity is measured in watts, and watts are just amps times volts. So if you see a device and you see how many amps and volts are on there, you could just multiply those two suckers and you'll get the watt. And on a, on a, on a deep sciency level, it's you're really measuring how much electrons are shed in a, in a second. Is, yeah, it's a uh, is great, great explanation. Off. Yeah, great explanation. You know, simply, again, just to reiterate, simply the maximum power output um, is, is what capacity is. So, yes. you know, if that's 20 watts in your laptop, if your laptop is all of a sudden demanding 21 watts, it's going to either shut off or blow, right? Um, same thing with the electricity grid. That's a huge concern. It's a it's a matter of national security, right? If 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 you know we over if, if we don't have enough capacity and um, you know we're demanding too much power on the grid, we have blackouts, and that's a huge problem. So it's been a it's been a very um, hot topic of discussion for many years now um, on how we handle this, and customers are paying into uh, capacity charges which I like to look at as, you know, a mandatory insurance policy that all customers have to pay to ensure the reliability of the grid, right? Is, it, is that how kind yeah, of you view it as well? If you use, because as you said, it's maximum, but one thing that's really underscore is like a funny way I heard of it being described is if the capacity to this laptop is 20 watts, if I use 21 watts, that's 20.1 uh, watts, that's the smoke number. If you go above the capacity, it blows up. So that's why, as you said, it's just a deep, it's an insurance policy because we can't use more than what we can take in or literally fire happens. Yep. So now that we understand what capacity is, let's talk about how it relates to a customer and why it's important for a consultant or a broker or anyone who is working with a customer to understand capacity. So uh, a customer, you know, has two basic cost components. Um, if you, if you dwindle it down, um, we have our energy costs. And then we have our capacity costs, right? Um, so focusing on those capacity costs and how that's determined. Uh, let's focus on PJM, uh, Pennsylvania, Jersey, Maryland, uh, which I believe has shoot uh, 13 to 17 states that it services. Um, don't quote me on that. Uh, started out Pennsylvania, Jersey, Maryland, and it ex it's expanded. Um, you folks in Illinois and Ohio, you know, that's our regional grid. Uh, but anyways, they're determining capacity values, right? Um, they're, they're, determ they're determining capacity values um, and how they're doing that is uh, through an auction process, okay? Um, that auction process is where all uh, power generators within PJM are submitting their best price for that auction, right? They want to be the winning bidder and that uh, whoever the winning bidder is determined by PJM, which they're looking for the best interest of the customer, truly they're a, not, they're a not for profit organization. Um, they're looking for the best interest of the customer, um, the best interest of the grid. So they're choosing the, the best auction. Um, and then uh, that gives us our, our set auction price. Um, but each individual customer is going to pay a different amount depending on how much electricity they're demanding from the grid. Um, so your capacity costs are evaluated off of two things, the auction price, right? Um, and the contribution that you're putting in on demand. So that can be looked at as your peak load contribution, uh, many times abbreviated as PLC, peak load contribution. Um, that's evaluated in a few different ways without getting too far into the weeds there. Um, simply the, you know, we're looking at the five, typically the hottest days of the summer, the days that have the most demand. Um, your meter is being read to determine your PLC value, to see how much electricity you're demanding from your meter. Not how much you're using during the day, how much your electricity, how much electricity your meter is demanding at that single moment, um, and that's how your capacity is determined. And so, capacity costs and energy costs make up a customer's total energy costs. And the and the uh, the equation that you just that you just explained of uh, so one side you have you have no control. The auction as a consumer, you 
basically have very little control unless you want to write your congressperson. But how much you use during your peak demand, you actually do have control of. And there are, there are strategies to reduce that side of the equation. And sometimes they call it uh, peak shifting or peak load mitigation. And there are, there are a lot of like small different tricks you can do because it's not how much you use at your, it's how much, the, it's, it's looking at the grid it's, at its highest demand time. And if you have the ability to shed during that time, like let's say it's a, like a really hot day and it's 3 p.m. And, you, and your business or your house's ability to shed, that savings will result over the entire year. Because on, the, on, on that side of the bill, the capacity side of the bill, they're looking at, yes, your annual capacity PLC, which is like an annual number, number that they designate you at the end of the summer. And they say, here's your number for 2020. And we're gonna multiply it by the real, real life auction price of the month. And so once you once you're tagged with that number during the PJM period, which is May to September, right, Ryan? Once again, don't quote me on it. I'm, I'm almost positive it's May to September. Uh, I believe, let me double check. I have it in my notes here. Yeah. Um, Let's go. It's, it's uh, June 1st through September 30th, so yeah. May 31st to December. You're right, yeah. Yeah, something, something like that. But that, that's the period they're looking for. But once in that period, it's not, a, it really isn't, it's, it is science-based, but it isn't a hard science. It is the government. Literally, they're giving you a tag. And that tag for the entire year is going to be carried over and multiplied by the auction price. So is, is, and that number could be from 10 to 50% of your bill, depending how, how efficient or inefficient you are. And so it's really key to kind of, if, if you can, it's really key to shed. And, and it's, it's really good to have an understanding of it um, because, you know, many folks doing what we do in this industry know nothing about capacity. And even if they do, they don't want to confuse the customer, but that's not in the best interest of the customer. You know, they need to fully understand their costs. Um, for a lot of reasons, it's going to make it easier for you to do business with them down the line. For example, you have them at a 4.8 fixed rate um, that's coming up for expiration. And you have all intentions of getting them the best number that you can. Um, but their capacity value has changed from the previous time you evaluated this. So their costs are automatically higher. And it doesn't really matter where the market's at. Their price is higher. So you, you need to be able to effectively explain that to the customer so they don't think you're just trying to raise the price on them. They need to understand, hey, my capacity is higher. That's why my rate's higher, right? And now when the customer understands that the rate is higher because of their capacity, they say, well, what can we do about that? And you have the solution. Absolutely. Because we, we do have the software where we, we do get updates on high likely days. And we always overcount where we'll, we'll send out like 10 to 12 alerts because it really, they don't tell you until after, unfortunately. So to be safe on the government, we'll be over, over liver. And speaking to what you were saying, Ryan, that is one of the most common things I hear from customers and from, from agents is, uh, wait, why, why am I getting six cents for this customer? When this other customer, I'm getting 4.5. And it's, yep. uh, in the, it, a lot of it is due to capacity because that's, that could be 10% or as I said, could be 50% of the bill. And right. so. And some, you know, a simple example of how, you know, a business could manipulate, you know, um, their, their capacity is by, let, let's say an industrial site that has, um, you know, they, they have two shifts. They've got a, um, a morning shift and they've got um, a day shift. They don't have a night shift. Um, but in the morning, they're firing up their machines um, right during peak hours, right? Um, they, they fire up the machines right in the morning. And that's when, um, you know, peak prices are in play from the utility. Um, so not only are they paying more from the demand during that time, um, they have a higher likelihood of their peak load being red during that period. So if we can make a simple adjustment um, and say, hey, fire up your sh fire up your machines during a, a night shift instead of a, a morning shift. Sure. Initially, that might seem crazy to a business owner. No, I'm not going to I'm not going to change the way I operate my business. But then if you can show them a dollar amount that they'd save by simply firing up their equipment at a different time or turning it down at the right time, uh, their eyes are going to be open to the possibility. So um, it's, you know, it's, it's a case by case situation, but a lot of times it's as simple as, Hey, what time do you fire up your machines? It's just, yeah, it really is just being a detective and just kind of working a big part of being an energy agent is just kind of working with what you, what you can and not expanding those limits. For instance, if they have a backup generator, that's some too that you could use to, to fire that up during, during peak hours. And so you're not hundred percent reliant on, on the grid's energy, you're right. producing some of your own. Or maybe this is an incentive to buy a backup generator because their capacity price is so high. 
And so, uh, and, and maybe they're, maybe they're, they, they, they're really lucky. And I see this often where like they were under construction during, during the summer. And so their cap tag is zero. And yeah. so in that case, you, what you want to do is lock them in with a supplier that will lock in the capacity tag mm -hmm. and, and not adjust it when it changes. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something to be mindful of. There are suppliers out. I mean, every, you know, suppliers have different approaches on how they handle capacity. You know, the, on, on long-term contracts where the tail end of it has an unknown capacity amount, many suppliers are lowballing that to make the pricing more attractive. And then they're making up for that on the back end. So you don't want to be managing a client that is, you know, all their savings are being diminished on the back end because the supplier you arrange them with had no idea what their capacity was going to be and they're passing through costs. So very important to be mindful of. Absolutely. And it's, it's always, yeah, just always look for things that don't look right and then ask why. Like if their capacity is already like is so low, it's like, hmm, why? Or do they have generators or were they under construction? Yeah. Be a detective, like you said. Yeah. And then, and, and be an advocate and knowledge is power. And uh, right. that's capacity. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> it is capacity. 